Welcome to Code Creative. I'm Travis Tolson. In this video, we're going to review the multi page catalog item solution that was recently published to the ServiceNow Share. First, we're going to cover why do we need a solution in the first place and address what the problem is we're trying to solve. Second, we're going to cover uh, why we should use Code Creative Solution and basically review what differentiates it from some of the other solutions that are out there. And lastly, we're going to provide a demo of some of the technical features and functionality and uh, cover some of the implementation of this solution. So first, why multi-page catalog items? Well, first it helps us manage the complexity. So users can be easily overwhelmed when we have really, really long forms with a lot of requests for input. Uh, the multi-page forms helps us to manage that complexity by breaking it up into bite-sized chunks, which improves the user's experience. Second, it enhances the conversation. Ultimately, a form is a conversation with the user. So improving the structure and flow of that conversation can help yield the desired responses that we're looking for from the user. And third, it rewards progress. So long form applications can be really daunting and intimidating to complete. Multi-page forms can provide a sort of visual reward for sticking with the process and ultimately automation only works if the users stick with it. So why Code Creative Solution? Well, first of all, it minimizes the technical risk. So many of the other solutions that have been done before, some of which I've put out there myself, um, has a lot of technical risk involved in them. There's a lot of non-standard function calls um, and ultimately they tend to be very complex. They either embed or uh, customize the native form widget. With this specific solution, there is no customization of the native form widget. We do not embed the native form widget. And we're only using about five lines of code that actually have undocumented API use. The rest of the implementation is using standard function calls. Second is multi-row variable sets. So anyone who has any experience with some of these uh, sorts of multi-step catalog item implementations will know that multi-row variable sets are implemented as a container. Um, and so when you are showing and hiding containers, it can be very difficult to get the desired outcome uh, with your multi-row variable sets. So this solution actually extends the data model by adding a sections table, which allows us to show multi-row variable sets very easily in conjunction with other containers. So basically we've separated the data model for the pages from the containers uh, in order to give us more control over how those forms are laid out. And three is it's customizable. So the complexity of this overall implementation is completely isolated in a single Angular provider that exposes an easy to use API. And basically all that means is you can bring your own widgets. So you can implement your own progress flow formatters if you wanted to on these forms. Um, and as long as you're using that specific Angular provider with the API it exposes, every all the complexity is hidden uh, from you and you can easily implement whatever views you want. Now, with that, before we go into a demo, I do want to issue the big warning, which is that even though this has done a lot to reduce the risk compared to some of the other solutions out there, um, the future stability of this solution still cannot be guaranteed. It is using undocumented APIs um, that are unique to Service Portal. And so those undocumented APIs are subject to change, and there's no guarantee that there will be a functional equivalent provided by ServiceNow. Uh, and future UIs are not guaranteed to implement a compatible feature set at all. So it is possible that this solution could break very easily in the future. But if you are, if you are pursuing a multi-step or a multi-page catalog item, this is one of the lowest risk variations that I have seen put forward. So with that, let's dive into a demo. So in this particular form, you can see the multi-step form. You can see the sections displayed down the side here. 
Uh, so this particular example is based off of the North Carolina Application for Food and Nutrition Services from the SNAP program. So we can easily click through and step through the different parts of this form. And this is all one catalog item. This is not an order guide or any other uh, separate uh, functionality. This is strictly using a standard catalog item. And each of these sections is implemented as a container. So you can see each multi-row variable set uh, in this particular form has its own section and stands on its own. We can also navigate using the next and previous buttons. Our progress is tracked uh, in our section navigator. And uh, I also put a convenient show all down here where it'll show all the sections and you can easily see how overwhelming this form could potentially be as one large form. And I'll also add that this is not actually implementing the entire SNAP form. There are additional sections that due to simple time constraints, I did not implement on this form. So this is a shortened version of it. Um, so hopefully you can see that having this broken down into the easily navigated sections can be a huge benefit to the user. Now, when we go back into the implementation of this on the back end, you will see that uh, basically we're just using the container start and container end variables to isolate the different sections for this particular catalog item. Uh, now, as I mentioned before, this is, this is how most of the implementations are done and where most of the implementations I've seen end is where each container stands on its own. And that has the limitation that each multi-row variable set that is added has to be on its own page. It, you can't have any other variables with it. Um, and that is how this particular catalog item is set up. However, I have another catalog item set up where we are using sections. Uh, this is a custom implementation, uh, custom table that I've implemented in this solution where I can associate containers and multi-row variable sets with a specific section. So in this catalog item, if I grab the sysid and we'll jump back and reload this form for that specific catalog item, you can see the identification, justification, options, and review sections correspond to the sections in this related list. And when I select any of these particular sections, it will show the containers and the multi-row variable sets that are associated with that particular section. So in the options case, you can see that I have um, the applications to install and the include con uh, the containers that are included in that specific section. And we can associate multiple containers and multiple uh, multi-row variable sets for each. So as I navigate, you can see that in this virtual server provisioning example, you can see that I have a multi-row variable set on the same page as other variables. Um, so this really enhances the capabilities of this particular solution where we can now um, really determine separately from the variables, we can determine what the actual pages look like. And basically, if the catalog item has sections associated, then the sections down this side will use the, that, the sections table. If no sections are specified, then it will uh, default back to using the container start uh, and the multi-row variable sets. I'll also add that if you have a single row variable set with containers within it, um, it will pick up those containers as well. So containers within variable sets will be treated as a form section if it is using the, uh, the default container-based sections. Now, from an implementation standpoint, you'll note that we've got a couple different widgets here. We've got the Code Creative SC Item Section Navigator. We have the Code Creative SC Item Pagination Buttons. 
and the default catalog item form widget. So we have not made any changes to the form widget. This is the native form widget, uh, uncustomized. And basically, if I take a look at the implementation, uh, and all of this code is provided uh, under the unlicensed license, so you are free to use this however you choose. Um, you'll see that I've got the catalog item navigator Angular provider over here, and you can see the entire set of functions that this API exposes. Uh, now, I mentioned earlier that there's only about five lines of code that are actually using non-standard functionality. And that would be these three lines of code right here, which is hooking into the G-Form events. Um, and then there are two lines of code for setting the visibility, uh, which would be right here, this set container visible. Uh, so this get field, and in specifically this underscore visible is what allows us to keep this solution very simple. This specific line of code right here is the critical piece to it. Um, and basically what this allows us to do is it allows us to bypass these pesky mandatory variables. So typically if you were to use gform.setVisible um, to hide this container, that mandatory variable would still show up. Um, by using this underscore visible, we actually bypass the gform checks uh, and directly set that visible property. Uh, one thing I would love to see is for ServiceNow to implement some of this functionality in their base implementation of Catalog, um, because I believe that this is some very useful functionality and it would be very easy to implement the few functions that are required on GForm uh, so that this hack would not actually be necessary. Um, but, the hack is fairly simple. It is using very few lines of code. So we've done a very good job of isolating the risk of this particular implementation uh, compared to others that I have seen, which usually involve um, some sort of juggling of the mandatory fields, uh, basically switching the mandatory off so that you can hide the container. Um, this one bypasses the need for that. Uh, in order to keep the implementation as simple as possible. Now, I will add that if I go all the way to the submit button, the mandatory is still enforced. And by not juggling that mandatory value, um, we do a better job of maintaining the how the um, UI, for, or UI policies and the catalog client scripts are supposed to work. So this widget isn't manipulating anything that could override any of the UI policies or uh, other scripts aside from the container visibility. So again, it really helps us to isolate um, the changes that this implementation is making. Now, the what's really great about having this particular navigator um, Angular provider is that you'll notice that in the client script of this widget, there's not really a whole lot of code. In fact, most of the code of this widget is CSS. The widget is exceedingly simple. And basically what that means is that you can easily implement your own versions of, uh, of this section navigator. So if you so desired, you could do a process flow across the top and all you have to do is create your own widget that hooks into that API. Um, and this API supports just a handful of very specific functions. Uh, the load is one that is important. So you'll need this, these three lines of code in whatever widget you create. Um, you'll call that load function. And other than that, you can select a specific section. You can, um, you can choose to show all. You can uh, click the submit button, which is uh, basically using the default submit functionality. 
And then, you know, there's a couple of other uh, next previous for, for that navigation, for the forward and back navigation. And this function that allows you to get the list of sections. So, you know, with this basic functionality in place, you can implement your own process flow widgets however you want. And once again, because we are not embedding the form widget, uh, you don't have to worry about any of the additional complexity. You can build your own widget, drop it onto the page, remove the old widget, um, and really kind of set this up however you want. Um, now, for demo purposes, I have created a cc underscore cat item page that functions equivalent to the sc cat item page. Uh, so you can choose to use this one via page route maps. Um, now, this specific page is expecting sections, so there's nothing in the current version of this uh, tool that will hide the sections if it doesn't have any. Um, so there are some things that can be done to enhance and improve upon this, and if you find this particular solution useful and would like to see further enhancements, I would love to hear from you, so let me know.